Hello and welcome to the tutorial for the Example 1 app for hot glue. This is the Books and Authors app. You should be follow along on the page if you'd like to see what I'm doing. I'm just going to install the app the way that the instructions say to do it. And in particular, you should note that I've already run through the setup steps. So let's take a look at the gem file here. And you see I've already installed the um, our spec gems, and I've already installed the Bootstrap and Hot Glue and Font Awesome, and I've run the Hot Glue installer. So let us start. Okay, so I'm going to start here. I'll just show you the page that you're looking at. Um, we're going to start here with Rails generate model author name colon string. If you're new to Rails, this syntax creates a model file and it also creates a database migration, which we're going to look at right now. So notice that it created this database migrators. There we go. So you'll notice that it created the migration, which tells Rails to create the author's table and it gives it a name. This T timestamp makes it have a created at and an updated at fields. And let's take a look at the in the app models, you'll find an author object. It's empty right now, but it was created for us by the, by the model generator. And next we're going to create a book model. This one has a few fields, so forgive me if I copy and paste here. All right. So Rails generate model book. It has a name, an author ID, which is a foreign key to the author's table, blurb, long description, cost, float, how many printed, sorry, that's cut off there. See how many printed, approved at, release on, time of day selected, which is either true or false, or genre. And you'll notice that this table simply has one of each type of field. And that's the purpose of it. It's just demonstrating, oh, we didn't actually create the database, so this doesn't like you to do that. Do I create the database here? Yes. Try that again. Okay, so let's take a look at the create books. You see it has all these fields that we just added with one of each type of field because we're going to demonstrate hot glue's capabilities. And while we're in here, it just happens that this is what we need to do for the next step. And in particular, we're going to need to tell Rails and Postgres, specifically Postgres, what the default values, uh, I mean, what the, the enumerated values, not the default values, for the genres. And in, with enumerated types in Postgres, it looks like this. And here we're going to pass it the list of keys as an array. They're not function. Type function too much. Uh, biography, science fiction. Mystery. Okay. And then we've specified, we've created the enum, which is global to the entire Postgres database. Uh, and we can assign, now assign this enum to specific fields that are of type enum. So in this case, we're going to say that genres, plural, is enum type. And, and then enum type, type takes a colon, so, um, or symbol rather. So uh, specify it uh, genres, like that. So that's just how you modify the create books migration to add the enums here. Now put the enum on the class itself. Make this just a little bigger. I think my other one has science fiction. Like that. Right? And this is a good demonstration of the enums because you can see that the key that the enum uses is a lower a lower case and underscores. And these strings are, have capital case, and in science fiction, at least, there's a space, which uh, demonstrates why we want to use the keys with the underscores um, uh, to identify the enum, but when it's displayed, it's displayed with this string. Now, in here, we're going to have to say 
belongs to author, right? A book is written by one author in this data model. And then the inverse of that is um, authors have many books, has many, has many, right? Okay, so let's uh, make sure we can migrate that. Indeed we can. Okay, now that we've created the author and books, we've created the database tables, we've created the migrations, and we've run the migrations, now we're ready to build the hot glue scaffolding. It's important to make a note of that because building with hot glue is a two-step process. First, you want to make your models. It's actually a three-step process. First, you want to make your models, then you want to add your relationships, and then you want to build with hot glue. So in this case, we're just going to build two scaffoldings, and since we have no login and no device, we're going to build them both as God controllers. God controllers mean they can simply see and edit all records in the database, so like their admin interfaces. This would be what you would do for an admin interface. Do not create a God controller for your users, or else the users will have access to all of the things in the database, which you don't want, probably don't want to give them. Rails generate hot glue scaffold, and then you just give the name of the thing we're going to build, which is just going to be author, and then G-O-D or G-D, either it's a synonym, either one is fine, and then you hit return. Okay, so now it's created all these files for us automatically. Um, it actually creates them and then g-subs them for a special metaprogramming reason. But let's take a look at them. Here's the files, here's the views, authors, right? So it's created errors, form, line, list, new, all these files here. The index looks like this, the list looks like this exactly, you see? So then let's create, let's go ahead and keep going and create the books. And you, you want to give that, you want to pass that in as singular, even though it's going to create things like controllers using plural. It takes care of all that. You don't need to worry too much about the singular and plural. If you have non standard plural, pluralizations, then there is a flag you can use to specify your non-standard pluralization. And I'm going to make this a god layout. I'm also going to use smart layout here. And I'll talk about what smart layout does in just a second. So now we have generated both the views for authors and the views for books. Let's take a look in the, uh, um, uh, on the web interface to see if it works. OK, that's our default page here. Ah, no route matches because I forgot to put the route in. Okay, this is pretty easy. We're just going to define, this is in the guides as well. And remember that resources in a Rails route specifies that it's going to create five different RESTful um, resources. Create uh, new, create, edit, update, and delete, or destroy. Start our server. And let's reload books here. Okay, that's the standard way that um, uh, the scaffolding comes out. That's our books page, and this is our authors page. And as you can see, we have no data in this table, so let's um, add, G oh, so this is a little tight, this name field. I'm actually going to go back and I'm going to rebuild the books, the authors table, right? Just hit up, author, I'm going to do a smart layout. And you'll get to see, now there's an annoying little thing with this regeneration, which is that it always thinks that it, there's a conflict in the ERB, and I'm sorry about that. I do intend to fix that someday. But for now, you just have to hit yes to overwrite all those files. Okay. Now you'll notice that when I, the first time we did it, it came out like this, and that was without smart layouts. And then let's take a look at it with smart layouts. You see that that name is a little bit longer. I'm going to get into exactly what smart layouts do later on in this course, but I wanted to introduce them to you right now because they're a very powerful feature of hot glue. So let's do. Um, Austin, save, right, okay. 
And then let's do, um, this down so you can see it. So as you can see, out of the box, hot glue builds us some very high functionality. If we switch on over to our books interface, we can already see that we have a whole interface to add new books and edit books. Let's say we added Beloved by Toni Morrison. You'll notice that all of these fields here have already been picked up automatically for you. So hot glue detected that the author ID was a foreign key and it made it into a dropdown. The blurb was a small uh, string, so it gave it just a small input box. The long description was text, so it gave it a, a larger text area. Cost and how many printed, how many printed is an integer, so it can only, ha it, uh, it's enforced to be a number. Approved at, release, time of day, these are all either date time, time here, or date. And they display in the HTML5 native date pickers. Selected as a Boolean, so it's either yes or no. And genre here displays based on the enum values that we gave it already. So let me just create the book, save, and as you can see, it created that book. Now we could um, edit it right here. Beloved 2, she wrote a sequel, right? And we can create it, uh, we, can, we could cancel it. We can delete it right off the page if we want to. That's pretty much what you get with hot glue. It comes right out of the box, and as you can see, we just created a two-table app with two baby scaffolding views right away. Now, a couple things to note. Um, one thing you'll note that uh, I was talking about earlier about smart layouts. What are those? Well, you'll notice here that it took 11 fields and it changed them into five columns. On the, on the In this context, I'm meaning column. I mean actual column on your layout. And when I say field, I mean field in your database, which is often referred to as a column. So that's what smart layouts do. They'd say if I have more than the available width, if I have more fields than the available number of columns, I'm going to stack them together, like you can see here, right? And this may or may not be what you want. If you like this kind of layout, then you should use smart layouts. Um, if you don't, then don't use smart layouts. So it tries to fit everything into six columns. And when you learn about down nesting, which is later on in the tutorial, you will see that portals of related records take up two columns uh, with smart layouts. So there's a whole way that it deals with related tables when it displays them on the, on the, on the interface. Okay, let's finally, let's just take a look at the code here. Um, here in our authors table, uh, or authors scaffolding, we we'll start with the index. And you'll notice that the top level views, and I have specifically called out which are the top level views. They are um, index and new, uh, edit, and any all of the turbo stream views are all top level views. The ones that begin with underscore here are partial. They are not top level views. The top level views have these instance variables set by the controller the way you'd expect many Rails apps to work. Then they will, in turn, the top level views will call the partials. So here is the, you know, we're on the index page and it goes to the list page. And you'll notice that it passes authors, the instance variable, at, to the local variable authors. Why is one an instance? Why is one a local? Well, the instance is simply denoted by the at symbol. And without the at symbol, it becomes local. So all we're doing here is we're saying the instance variable authors is passed into the authors list partial which is here, as the author's local variable. That's the main thing to note. From here on out, you can customize your views if you want to customize your views. If you do customize your views, you won't really be able to easily rebuild your scaffolding. That's one of the drawbacks. But what I do is I make light customizations. And then if I want to come back and regenerate the scaffolding, I do. And then I use Git to see where my customizations are and I reapply those to the newly generated code.